Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Uh, today we're gonna talk about the ulnar nerve because uh, this nerve is actually the, the second most commonly entrapped nerve. Um, the first being the median nerve at the wrist, which is your carpal tunnel. So it is pretty common to see um, entrapment with the ulnar nerve and it responds uh, very well with conservative care. So I just wanted to talk a little bit about that today and show you an exercise that you can uh, try at home if you do feel like you are dealing with um, these kind of symptoms or dealing with something with the ulnar nerve. So um, the ulnar nerve, it branches off of the brachial plexus. So the brachial plexus is kind of like a nerve bundle or nerve plexus coming out of the neck and that ulnar nerve branches off there and then it comes down and it runs down the inside of the forearm here and it supplies, if it goes to the pinky and then half of the ring finger here. So a lot of people, you know, think that um, they're getting some numbness and tingling into the pinky, so they must have carpal tunnel syndrome. But um, we've kind of gone over this in the past. The if, if you're dealing with true carpal tunnel syndrome, that's compression over the median nerve, which goes to the thumb, the uh, index finger, middle finger, and then half the ring finger. So if you're having some entrapment of that ulnar nerve, you're going to be feeling it in the pinky and then this half of, of the ring finger there. So that's not the same thing as uh, carpal tunnel syndrome. But there are, you know, a few places where um, this nerve tends to get to become entrapped along its path through here. So um, the first one being right, like you can almost, you can feel this on yourself as there's a little groove um, on the inside of your elbow here, and it's called the, the cubital tunnel. Um, and that's a pretty common place for this nerve to uh, get caught up in there. Um, it's, it's the same area that you hit if you, you know, hit your funny bone on something. Um, that's that, that area there. And then um, the second place where it can get trapped is just a little bit further down and there's a muscle called the flexor carpial narus and there's two heads there. So um, as it kind of runs down that form, it, it can get caught up and trapped in there. And then another one um, that it can get uh, caught up in is called the tunnel of Guion or tunnel of Guion. Um, and that's just an area where it runs through couple of the carpal bones, your, your pisiform and then the hamate, and it, there's a little tunnel that it goes through. This one's less common. Um, we don't see that as much, but it's still possible. So, um, those, those three sites there. Um, and then also we definitely, you know, want to check out the neck as well. It, um, big, big, big thing here, um, that can kind of, uh, create symptoms down into the forearm and into the hand is entrapment up in the neck, deep scalene muscles where all this stuff kind of comes through. So um, if you are, you know, dealing with some sort of entrapment here, um, we want to, you know, first of all, make sure that we're ruling out anything um, from the neck itself that's, that's creating the symptoms. So something like a disc herniation or something pressing on kind of the nerve roots coming out of the neck can also create these symptoms. So we, so we want to make sure we rule that out first before we, you know, just assume that um, tightness or adhesions through the, the forearm is what's causing um, the, the numbness and tingling. So this kind of the symptoms, you can have, you know, pain, uh, numbness, tingling, weakness, um, similar to what we've talked about in the past with the median nerve, the same kind of symptoms there. Um, so one thing we, you know, when we're treating something like this, um, our treatment of choice in the office is active release technique, or, you know, you can use um, some instrument assisted soft tissue mobilization stuff. Uh, but ART really, really helps to, to work out the adhesions that can form around there and cause the entrapment of that nerve and just allow it to kind of glide back and forth without getting caught up in those areas. Um, so I want to show you a little exercise here that you can try out um, at home if you feel like you are dealing with uh, dealing with these symptoms or dealing with some entrapment through there. Um, 
So it's it's a it's an ulnar nerve flossing. So we're flossing that nerve back and forth, just allowing it to kind of glide back and forth and break through any of um, adhesions that may have have formed in the area. So super simple. Um, you know, try to knock this knock this out about six to eight times or so, um, even you know up to ten reps a few times throughout the day. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna make that okay sign, and then all you're gonna do is you're gonna flip it over. And as you bring your, your hand up to your head, you're going to side bend to that side. And then we're just gonna kind of extend that arm out and bend that head to the other side. And then we're gonna come back, making that okay sign. So we're putting tension on that nerve this way, but we're slacking it as we um, side bend to that same side. So same thing here. And then back this way and out. So give this a try at home. Uh, let me know what you think. If you have any questions, uh, please let us know and we will talk to you all soon.